My word, if there was ever such a divisiveness of the fan base for this particular DC show, it's definitely apparent here in season four. Will you marry me? Yes. And I was supposed to marry the fastest man alive. So The Flash Season 4 again picks up a few months after the events of Season 3 where Barry entered the Speed Force and Iris is left feeling very heartbroken over the loss of her fiancé and the team are trying to do their best to pick up the pace from where Barry left off. And as you can see, we have Cisco a lot more in the field as Vibe and Kid Flash is trying to essentially take the place of Barry. Keep loving, keep running for me. I promised him I'd run. So that's what I've been doing, running as fast as I can. And as you guys know from the end of season three, Caitlin is also working remotely away from the team. However, it's kind of a bit goofy the way how they handle the whole Caitlyn Snow and Killer Frost aspect this season, as it's kind of like the Incredible Hulk. That's the only way to describe it. However, once Barry does get back, we finally get the fun. However, once Barry does get back, we finally get the fun, loving Barry back that we all enjoyed from the first season. However, there are a few dark moments that he has here and there, particularly in the few episodes he spends in prison, for why I'm not going to go into. And it's kind of interesting to see that development, and they are some of the best episodes of this season. How could you possibly be fine? Dad, what do you want me to do? Curl up in a ball and cry all day? However, I have to say this, the weakest character of this season is unfortunately Iris, despite the fact that, you know, eventually her and Barry get their, both their dreams come true, she isn't given much else to do apart from being team leader for no real reason when she has no real qualifications to do so. And we also get a new character introduced this season in the form of Ralph Dibney, who is also known as the elongated man once he gets his powers. And even though the guy is just absolutely impossible to like, somehow the writers managed to give him such a massive character growth and make him such a compelling character. And I, for one, am really glad that he is being made a regular for season five. Sometimes I feel like if I believe in something hard enough, that'll make it real. I miss my friend. Barry's not coming back. You don't know that. Barry told me to be strong and being strong. Guys, what are we looking at? <laughs> Expecting someone else? Hey, hey, hey. But yet again, the best element of this season, in my opinion, is the thinker. Fans have been complaining for quite a while now that it's just been speedster after speedster after speedster. So what do they do this season? Give us someone completely different, who isn't fast but has a brilliant mind and is quite an interesting villain. However, he is quite an interesting villain for what we see of him, as the guy who plays Clifford DeVoe isn't featured all that much in a lot of the episodes, as you kind of get an interesting aspect where... The thinker goes through very different guises, that's all I'm gonna say. Hey, hey. I don't understand, that should have worked. Dead bang, fellas. Please to the party! And for me personally, I don't understand what the fans are complaining about so much with this season as we kind of have a bit of a course correct from season three, which in my opinion is still the worst season that this show ever produced. You're up against some bad hombres. And what do you think you're going to do against us with a sword? Bring me the flash 
or else your city falls. The hell kind of sword is that? And I'm going to talk about the crossover in greater detail at the end of this week, but it is nice to see all these characters come together and Barry and Iris finally get what they've been wishing for for what seems like the past three years or so, particularly with Barry. However, by the end of this season, we also have a new character introduced who is going to play a larger role in Season 5. And that's the best way to describe this season, is that it seems to be, while giving us a main story to be getting on with, a lot of it seems to be set up for the next season. But I will say this, the worst episode this season, even though they explain it pretty well has to be the episode where Iris gets a costume. And for that, I'm not going to go into too much detail as to actually what happens with that, but it's still a, one of the weaker storylines that this season has produced. If we don't offer up the Flash, people are going to die and that's going to be on us. I made a few slight modifications, as Captain Solo would say. And also, Joe and Cecile get a very interesting side plot with them dealing with the pregnancy and eventual birth of their baby by the end of the season. And I will say this, when the thinker really wants to take down Barry, he really goes for it and provides Barry with a really big challenge. That's the one thing I will say about all of the Flash's villains. In their own way, they have always proven to be a very formidable foe against Barry and his team. So with all that said, The Flash Season 4 is definitely worth checking out in my opinion, even though opinions on this season are very mixed. My final verdict is an 8 out of 10. Where is you of all people? How can you not be in on this? I'm going to lock on something. It's him. It's him! Thanks for watching this guys as always, now it's over to you so feel free to comment below and tell me what your thoughts are on The Flash Season 4. And as always guys if you are new to my channel feel free to click here to see more and subscribe as I do make new videos as often as I can. Don't forget to click that bell so that you're always notified of whenever a future video is posted. And as always guys I shall see you all on the next one and take care.